Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. Up until now, we've only scratched the surface of what we can do in Home Assistant because we've only configured integrations and automations using the UI. In this video, we're going to take a look at configuring automations and other things using YAML. Before we get too deep into YAML, we should probably discuss its future within Home Assistant. And to do that, let's take a look at a blog post from one of the lead developers on the Home Assistant project, Frank Nyhoff, from back in April. A number of community members have speculated that YAML might be going away within Home Assistant. And Frank in his blog post has stated, the answer to this question is no, it's not going away, but. Essentially, the goal of updating Home Assistant to use the UI to configure things rather than using YAML is to make things easier to help remove breaking changes and improve shareability and security. So the future of Home Assistant includes both YAML and the UI configuration. Home Assistant is an open source project and there's many contributors creating new integrations all the time. But for any new integration that communicates with devices and or services, they need to support configuration using the UI and configuration via YAML is only allowed in very rare cases. The last thing I want to mention on this page is the, this quote here. The goal is not phasing out YAML. The goal is to make the best home automation platform in the world that is easy to use for everybody, enabling users of all experience levels to enjoy this wonderful hobby we all share and allowing everyone to focus on what matters most, automating our homes. And I think that's actually a pretty, pretty good quote. So with that out of the way, let's talk about YAML itself. Now, the first thing we need to do is define what is YAML. If we take a look at the website yaml.org, we'll see that YAML is a human friendly data serialization standard for all programming languages. So now that we've defined what YAML is, let's take a look at YAML in the context of Home Assistant. Now, the other week we spoke about automations and we created this porch light on automation and some details here. If we take a look at the automations.yaml file, we can see that we've got the same information inside this automations.yaml file and that was created for us by Home Assistant. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these next to each other and we'll take a closer look at the YAML and kind of pull it apart a little bit. Everything inside YAML is broken down into key value pairs. So we've got this key here of alias and the value of porch light on, and that's this name in here. We don't have one for ID. That ID is a unique identifier that's created by Home Assistant. Those IDs do need to be unique. We have our description key of turn porch light on at sunset and the description in there. And we've got our mode single and we can see that the mode is single in there as well. Now looking at the mode, you'll notice that there is a little bit of an oddity within Home Assistant created YAML in that it does alphabetically order the YAML here based on the key. I believe there is a bug request in with the Home Assistant team to get that resolved. So digging further, we can take a look at the trigger um, and we've got triggers here. And the trigger is we've got a trigger type of sun, platform sun. Uh, we have a event of sunset, event sunset and offset is 15 minus 15. The same for conditions. So we'll take a look here. We have conditions, our condition type is state. Our entity is person.stuart and our state is home. And lastly, we've got actions. So we have action type is call service, which is there. The service we're calling is light.turnon and the entity ID that we're turning on is light.porchlight. And we've got some service data there. Uh, we've got nothing in there. So we're not showing anything over here inside the curly braces either. 
Okay, so what I want to do is create an automation that turns the water closet light on when motion is detected in there. So I'm going to start by putting in a dash to create a new array inside the automations.yaml file. I'm going to start with an ID and I'm going to call this WC light on one. It doesn't matter too much what you call that ID so long as it is a unique value for Home Assistant. Now on the next line we need to put in two spaces. Um, two spaces is very important. If you put in a tab, uh, that is not going to work for Home Assistant. It, uh, it's not valid YAML syntax. So we want two spaces and we're going to type in alias and we're going to put a colon and I'm going to call this water closet light on motion. Whoops. Description. Turn on the water closet light when motion is detected in the water closet. Okay, so we've got our ID, our alias, our description. We need to give it a mode and we're going to set the mode to single like this one before. Okay, fantastic. And now we want to look at the trigger. We're going to also, I'm just going to also put in condition and I'm going to put in action here. Uh, we'll need each of those later on. Okay, so inside the trigger, we need to put in an array. So a dash and then a space. And what I'm going to do is go entity ID. And I need the motion sensor for the water closet. So um, I've taken the liberty of identifying the water closet motion sensor. And so over here, if I click on the gear, we can see that the entity ID is binary underscore sensor dot motion underscore sensor underscore and then a string of numbers. So what I'm going to do is grab that and put that in there. So entity ID binary sensor motion sensor. What I want is for from off to on. And now we want to take a look at the conditions. So I want to create a condition of state. The condition state is I want entity underscore ID. So I want the water closet light to be off. So I'm going to grab this entity ID, this light.lifexpls. I'm going to go copy and I'm going to paste that in there, entity ID, and I want the state of that to be off. So when the binary sensor dot motion goes from off to on, if this light is in a state of off. So now we need to create an action. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a service and the service we're going to call is light dot turn underscore on. We're going to perform that on entity ID. And we're just going to grab this same entity ID from here to here. So for our action so far, we've got service light.turn on, we've got entity ID light.lifexpls. And so I want to add some data. And so inside the data, I want to add brightness. And I'm going to set it to 100% brightness. I want to set Kelvin, and that's our color temperature, the, the warm or cool white color. And I'm going to set that Kelvin value to 2700. I'm going to set this power value here to true. So I've set my brightness, my Kelvin, my power. I also want a transition value. And that's just so that it's a uh, slow and gentle turn on rather than a 
on like so. So I've set that transition value to five seconds. If we take a look over at the Home Assistant documentation, um, we've got the light integration documentation up. If we scroll down a bit further, we see we've got the service.light turn on and it turns one light on or multiple lights on using group and the different attributes that we can trigger. So we've obviously firstly got our entity ID of light.lifex. We're triggering the service.light on and in the data section here, we're adding a transition. We could also send HS color um, to change the particular color that we want to do, or we can send XY color to do the same thing, or an RGB color, white value, a color temperature, Kelvin. We're doing Kelvin rather than the color temp. If we wanted to, we could do a color name. So we're setting brightness at 255, and we're doing that because it's an integer of between zero and 255. If we wanted to, we could change this to brightness underscore PCT and so brightness percent and we could set that to 100. We could tell the light to flash if we wanted to or we can apply, apply an effect to that as well. Now because this particular light is a, a LifeX bulb, we could also take a look at the LifeX set state transition and there's some additional things we could do with the LifeX, but we're not going to do that right now. So now we've created this automation, I'm going to save this file. So if we take a quick look in the automations on our Home Assistant, we'll see that we don't actually have that listed yet. So before we can actually use that new automation, we need to go to server controls. And anytime you modify the YAML on your Home Assistant, whether it's the configuration file, the automations file, any of the YAML files, we want to run check configuration. And, oh, configuration invalid. Invalid config for automation, required key not provided at data trigger. Uh, and it, it's expecting a platform. So the automation that we just ran, if we take a look at trigger, we'll see that we're missing a platform. So we're going to write in platform and the platform we want here is state. So that's the importance of using check configuration. So let's run that again. And we've got configuration valid. So now that we've confirmed that our configuration is valid, we want to scroll down here. And you'll remember in episode two, we took a look at YAML configuration reloading. We didn't really do much with it. So each of these items here, we can actually use to reload individual configuration items within Home Assistant. And in this particular case, I want to reload automations. So if I hit reload automations, and now go back to here, and we'll click on automations. Now we've got water closet light on, on motion. Awesome, let's just go test that that worked. Okay, fantastic. And uh, we've had that work and you can see that we've got the last triggered of the 26th of September, 2020, which is the day that I'm recording this. So let's click on the edit tab and take a look at what we've created here. So we've got water closet light on motion. We've actually got that over here, turn on the water closet light. So all of that stuff that we have created within the YAML over here is available over in here as well, even uh, the service data that we created. So now that we've done that once, what I want to do is create the reverse. I want to turn the water closet light off after a period of time. So I'm going to go ID and WC light off one and two spaces alias water closet light off description turn off the water closet light if no motion for 10 minutes okay so alias water closet light off description turn off the water closet light if no motion for 10 minutes and mode again i want that to be single we want to start with a trigger we want platform and we want this one to be state again and we want the 
entity ID. So we're going to grab the same motion sensor and make that in there, two spaces. And we want that to be two off. And this time I'm going to add a four value in here. And I want to add zero, zero, 10, zero, zero. So 10 minutes. So when it transitions to off for 10 minutes, that's our trigger. We want a condition and our condition is a state condition as well. And the entity ID, I want that to be this entity ID. Okay, fantastic. And I want the state to be on. Okay, so the trigger is the state of the binary sensor needs to go to off for 10 minutes and the light also needs to be on for this automation to run. Lastly, we want to do action. What am I doing? I don't need those. I do need one there. So in our action, we want to call a service. And we'll go light dot turn off. The entity ID we want is that one. And data. We're just going to put in curly braces because we're not actually sending any additional data there. All right, so let's save that file and see how I did. So we'll go to server controls, check configuration. Configuration's valid, fantastic. We'll reload the automations and we'll pop back out, grab automations and Water closet light off. Last triggered with never. We'll open that up and we can see all of the stuff that we've created here. Fantastic. So that's creating automations using YAML. There's so much more that you can do creating automations and uh, even integrations with YAML. However, that's all the time we have for in this particular video. I would highly recommend if you are looking at playing around with automations uh, using YAML um, to take a look at the documentation for the particular service that you're wanting to do. There's some great documentation on automations as well on the homeassistant.io website. Thanks again for watching. I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your friends. It really does help me out growing this channel. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Thank you.